Um, ongoing talks. I mean, this is a story we've been covering for weeks now about uh, when, or when, or, or will ever uh, the British uh, allow the Ukrainians to use the British Storm Shadow missiles, long-range missiles, to fire into Russian territory to target military targets in Russia, where they're sending missiles into Ukraine. Sure. And a lot of this comes down to relationship with America and whether Americans will give permission because they play a role in the technology used in the storm shadows. But why is this taking so long? What is the long delay, especially given the trip by the US Secretary of State and David Lammy to see Zelensky last week? OK, well, first of all, there is obviously a degree of a difference of view between the United Kingdom on the one hand and the United States on this. It wasn't always a difference, but the British position has moved in favour of supplying these missiles. But it must be right for the NATO countries to have a joint position. You can't just do it individual countries. That creates more chaos than, than uh, help for the Ukrainians. Uh, why is there a problem? Uh, essentially because not just the Americans, uh, the British as well, and the French, Germans and others, are all very uh, anxious to ensure that what is at the moment a Russian-Ukrainian war uh, did not inadvertently lead to a third world war. And once you're dealing with missiles originating in America or Britain or France or Germany yeah. being used by Ukraine to attack Russia specifically, that doesn't mean it shouldn't happen. I've got my views on that, which I'm happy to share, but it does make it a more complex issue, which you can't just jump into an answer. No, that, that's the thing. This is much more complicated. It's very, and again, the ratcheting up we have seen of you know, British Challenger tanks being used on Russian territory. Yeah. That sudden incursion by the Ukrainians' forces into Russian territory was soon to be a surprise to pretty much everyone, including, we think, some of Ukrainian allies over this. But there has been this concern from day one, well, after the point at which people realised that Ukraine was able to defend themselves and they weren't going to be immediately overrun by Russian forces, that, that NATO, Western forces were gradually going to be drawn into a direct conflict with Russia. And there's also that concern, isn't there, about nuclear weapons being held by Russia. How serious a concern yes. do you think that should be? Well, it's a legitimate concern. I think it's extremely improbable that Putin would be so stupid as to think of using even tactical nuclear weapons yeah. in response. However, we cannot just apply a rational criteria. Uh, Putin does do things which are very stupid from time to time. The invasion of Ukraine itself was supposed to be over in three weeks. And here we are two and a half years later, and he still has not uh, brought uh, Ukraine to its knees. So Putin can do dumb things, and you've got to try and make that as unlikely as possible. My own view uh, is that Putin is desperately hoping Trump is going to become president of the United States, and he will be much less helpful to Ukraine. Uh, by his own words, that is yeah. what he is. Well, he says he could end the war on day one, and we well, know the only way you could... That's not well, exactly, happen. I know, but, he, but again, he, he, his, his, but, but, he, that will simply be by basically withdrawing all that funding. Well, he's obviously le much less likely to be sending weapons to Ukraine, yeah. even if it takes longer than 24 hours. Mm. So that, I think, is the issue. But I think there is a way this could be taken forward. Uh, I'm not against what is being discussed myself, but I'm cautious about it. But I think that what the uh, United States and the United Kingdom and other NATO countries should be saying to Ukraine is yes, you can use these long range missiles against Russian targets, but only, and this is a very important qualification, if the targets you choose are those from which the Russians are themselves attacking Ukraine. Yes. In other words, if it's an airfield or some other base which the yeah. Russians have chosen to use to launch missiles that are destroying Ukraine, then no reasonable person can say yeah. that Ukraine should not have a comfortable... That, I mean, that is a, a legitimate target in, in war, is it not? However, of course, you yes. know as well as I do, you get the collateral damage and then, of course, giving well, Putin any excuse the balance, that he would want. Yeah, sure, you're right. But then the balance between risk and opportunity is much easier to resolve. If you were simply giving an unqualified right to Ukraine yeah. to launch missiles originating in Britain or America against any Russian target, in theory, that could include Moscow. Uh, and, yeah. you know, that is not what any rational person ought to do. No. I'm not saying Ukrainians but, but, but wouldn't. We, but we've seen... But you, a, have to, you have to lay down conditions. Over the last two and a half years, we've just seen again and again, and Boris Johnson played, I think, you know, I'm very happy to criticise him, and I think he's in the wrong, but he, he played a magnificent role in terms of garnering not just American but other NATO support in Europe uh, towards Ukraine. We've been training people since 2014, the invasion of Crimea, Crimea to, so the Ukrainians could defend themselves. But, but we've basically been sort of dragging other countries, almost kicking and screaming, to giving enough military aid and financial aid to Ukraine. Um, 
but I mean, we eventually, I'm pretty sure, again, like, you know, eventually we got to the tanks, and eventually we got to the F-16 jets, although not enough of them. Eventually we're going to probably get to these Storm Shadow missiles and other missiles being used uh, against Russian military targets. Um, but we, we always seem to be sort of doing it a bit too slowly. Isn't Okay, part... let me try and respond to do, that please point. Please do. Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, yes, Britain has been a great champion of Ukraine. You're right to say so. But it's not been the only champion. I mean, Poland has done even more yeah. to help Ukraine, for for example, uh, and the United States itself. Although, you know, if you measure it in percentages and statistics, <laughs> and, you know, the fact is, without American help, yeah. the Ukrainians are unlikely to have made the progress they make. Because the American help, in terms of its scale and its uh, sophistication, is ahead of that of any other country, including other uh, NATO uh, countries. So, yes, you're right these things take time but this is totally unprecedented yeah. in previous examples of russian aggression not just against ukraine but against georgia against other uh, uh, territories uh, the west has not given military help at all and i pay all credit to president biden in particular but also british and, and french and german governments who from day one of the U invasion of ukraine said we will provide military yeah. equipment to assist can, can I just say, this is why I don't think what Putin did was irrational. He he not unreasonably believed that the West would not act to protect Ukraine because they hadn't done anything to protect Ukraine. So they didn't do it in Crimea and they didn't uh, do it in Georgia. Stupid, not, yeah, it wasn't an irrational right, move. No, no, but he's not completely stupid. He's no. not barking. And he knew perfectly well to actually invade Ukraine and try and remove its government and to take Kiev was dramatically greater in terms of aggression. Yeah. The single most aggressive act in Europe uh, since 1945. Yeah. So he knew that he was doing that. What he stupidly believed was the advice of some of his cronies who wanted to please him, uh, that most Ukrainians uh, would be so delighted to welcome yes. Russian troops that it would be all over in 72 hours. Now, that was stupid, and that shows how out of touch an individual dictator can be. But that also yeah. gives reason to worry, because people who are dictators not answerable to anyone else. He could, in theory, take a decision on limited use of tactical nuclear weapons. Fortunately, if he did, it wouldn't just be the Americans and NATO who were very, very responsive. China has made it clear mm. that on that issue, they would not support Russia. And they've told, uh, Xi Jinping has told that directly to Putin. So Putin needs Chinese help. And that is an additional reason why I yeah. think nuclear weapons are, are very unlikely, but you just cannot say it could never happen. Indeed. Uh, really good to talk to you. Thank you so much for your analysis. So Ma uh, Malcolm Rifkin, former Defence and Foreign Secretary, of course, in the John Majors. Thank you for that. Uh, Claire Pearsall, uh, also former Conservative Government advisor. Uh, what do you make of this? Because I, I just think eventually, of course, these weapons are going to be used. Is this a slow ratcheting up towards World War III? Is just, or is this frankly the sort of help we should have been giving, frankly, two years ago? Well, I mean, it's a, this is a complicated one, but I think if they are going to be used against legitimate targets absolutely the range of the the storm shadow missiles is about 150 miles so they're not going to be hitting the kremlin anytime no. soon if they do use them but we do need america's buy-in as well because some of that technology is yeah,